Hi, it's good to see you again. I'm looking forward to these two weekends that we have in our church family where we're going to be focusing on global ministry issues. This is something that we don't talk about necessarily every week, but this time of the year we make some special efforts to, as a whole church family, focus on what God's doing in the world, different aspects of that, and how He's calling, how He's inviting us into that with Him. Now, these two weekends that we have this spring are focused on the topic of refugees. In fact, the theme is something called No Longer Strangers. And you might wonder, where in the world does that come from? Where did we get that? Well, let me just put a little bit of a backdrop behind this from Scripture so that you can see where we're trying to go and what we're trying to, to wrestle with biblically over these two weekends. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, God speaking to the nation of Israel reminded them that at one time in their past, they themselves had been outcasts, they'd been foreigners, they had been strangers. In fact, they had been refugees. God said to them through the prophet Moses in Leviticus 19, You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. Now God gives them the reason why they're supposed to do that. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. God did not want Israel to ever forget their experience in Egypt. He did not want them to forget that they themselves had once been in bondage. They'd been in slavery. They were outcasts. They were foreigners. They were strangers. And because of the grace of God he had shown to them, he wanted them in turn to display that same sort of grace to the foreigner, to the stranger who was living among them. Now you might say, oh, well, that has something to do with the Old Testament and that doesn't really apply to us. Let me take you to the New Testament. Here's another uh, passage of scripture and where the phrase itself, no longer strangers, comes from. Paul speaking now to New Testament believers, most of whom were not Jews, who came from a Gentile background, and I'm assuming that most who are watching this right now fit into that category just like I do. Paul says to them in Ephesians 2 verse 12, he says, remember that you were at that time, in a time past, separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. He goes on to describe them as being far off, people who were aliens and strangers. And then dropping down to verse 19, he says to these first century Christians in verse 19 of chapter 2 in Ephesians, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. How did that happen? How did people like you and me, who had been strangers and aliens, we didn't have any hope, we didn't have any peace of the promises that God had made to Israel. How is it that we are now people who are members of his, of his kingdom, of his commonwealth? He answers that question in the preceding verse. It says that Jesus himself is our peace. He made us both one. He broke down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. This is the mystery, the wonderful thing of the age in which we live now. God is doing something mysterious in the world today by bringing Jew and Gentile together through the power of the cross into one new community. And those of us who were far off strangers have now been brought near and we are no longer strangers. So you might ask, well, what does that have to do with this theme of refugees over these next two weekends? I really believe, and many people like me do as well, that God is doing something remarkable in the world today. And that as we see the mass movements of people around the world, many of them coming out of the Middle East as well as other places, God is moving the nations. He's bringing people who have not had exposure to the good news that we just uh, spoke of here from Ephesians 2, the fact that Jesus Christ can bring hope. And he can take people, Jew and Gentile, Arab and Jew, in the Middle East, and he can bring them together into one new body, reconciling people who otherwise would never be reconciled. And the best hope for that is for people to meet a common Savior who died for all mankind, Jesus Christ. So here at Emmanuel Faith, in these couple weekends, we're going to be taking a look at how God is moving people today 
for his gospel purposes and seeing his kingdom grow and seeing people brought into this new community where Jew and Gentile, foreigner and stranger and, and local person alike can find common hope in Jesus Christ. And here in San Diego County, God is bringing thousands of people from countries that typically do not have much exposure to the gospel. We're going to be looking at that phenomenon. We're going to be hearing from speakers from the Middle East, speakers from Europe that have received many of these refugees, and hearing about what God is doing today and the wonderful doors of ministry that are open to the church in the Middle East, the church in Europe, and now for us right here in San Diego County that's open to us as well. I hope you'll be a part of this. I hope you'll attend. There are some discussion questions for our small groups online that will help you wrestle with these passages and go a little bit deeper and discuss in your groups what that might mean for you in your personal lives and in your small group. I hope you'll dig into it and really learn a lot.